Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black or Rakdos sacrifice deck that's taking advantage of some of the new disguise creatures and we can actually start our curve at one mana with a goblin mask maker which says when the mask maker attacks face down spells you cast this turn get a one mana discount. So turn one mask maker can potentially let us disguise one of our creatures on turn two already and one of the more exciting creatures in this deck is the hunted bone brute three mana six two with menace but if we cast it normally, it has a drawback of giving the opponent a pair of 1-1 one, one dog tokens. So instead, if we disguise it first and then turn it face up, we can kind of circumvent that drawback. And then when it dies, it also makes the opponent lose 3 life. So if we sacrifice a Bone Brute to some of our fling effects, such as the Callous Cell Swords Adventure burn together, we can deal 6 damage from the Bone Brute, plus 3 more from the ability. So that's 9 damage, and that's without any additional pump spells or plus 1 counters that we might get on it. So that's kind of part of our game plan, dealing a little bit of early damage and then trying to burn the opponent out with these huge chunks of damage. And then uh, taking a look at our two drops besides Cell Sword, which we can adventure and then also cast as a creature. We've got the Fugitive Codebreaker as another creature we can play face down. Could also play it as a 2 1 Prowess Haste, so it fits in pretty well no matter where we play it on our curve. And then in the late game, if we first played it face down and turn it face up, we can discard our hand to draw three cards, so it can be a nice way to refuel. And then the Pyrotechnic Performer is another important piece of the puzzle. It can be played as a 2-mana 3-2, saying whenever the Performer or another creature we control is turned face-up, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. So especially powerful in combination with a Bone Brute, if we turn it face-up it can deal 6 damage just from turning it face-up alone. And then we can potentially also get an attack in as a 6-2 Menace, so that can also quickly add up. And the Performer itself can also be played face-down and then turned face-up, also great in multiples as the ability will stack and then besides the Cell Sword, we can also sacrifice our creatures with the Voldaren Thrill Seeker. Does require a little bit more mana if we want to play Thrill Seeker and pay one mana to the backup sacrifice ability. But it also comes into play giving us two plus one counters, so it gives us a lot of options. And then the Thrill Seeker itself can also be sacrificed at a later point. And then rounding out the deck, there's two copies of Cacophony Scamp, which plays well in any deck looking to sacrifice its creatures and increase power, as it will deal damage equal to its power on the way out. Then a Kumano, great in any aggressive deck, can play it early, and then on chapter 2 can also give us an extra plus 1 counter, which can maybe synergize with the rest of our creatures, and a 2 to haste when transformed. And then we've got some cheap instants. Monstrous Rage, of course, very important to push through damage, makes it easier for Mask Maker to keep attacking and giving us that discount. And then can also be very effective in combination with Performer, turning our creatures face up after casting a Monstrous Rage or in response to the trigger can increase the damage significantly. And same with the Cell Sword if we combine both in the same turn and then play with fire, giving us a bit of interaction and another cheap burn spell to maybe close out the game and can also help discount the codebreaker, adding more instants to the graveyard. And then our mana base, want to be heavy on the red sources, since we don't need a whole lot of black just for Cell Sword if we cast it as a creature, or Bone Brute if we turn it face up, but we can easily play a game where we don't need black mana whatsoever. So don't want too many tap lands like Haunted Ridge, just two of those, and then Black Leaf Cliffs and Springs are perfect here, and then plenty of mountains, and some channel lands for added utility. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Kumano can maybe set up turn two either Performer or Codebreaker. They both benefit from extra counter, of course. Opponent looks to be blue-white control. So whatever we play here might get countered. So there's also an argument for playing the Mask Maker. Although I'm gonna have to run into a No More Lies at some point. So maybe go for Codebreaker, since we're pretty far from transforming it. And then Performer we could also play face down next turn. Alright, we got an attack in for three. Anchorage tapped and a Ravelry back up to 20. So this is where Monstrous Rage can come in handy. So we'll attack all out, see what they do. Double block Codebreaker, so we can rage the Codebreaker to trample over. 
And then we have to decide if we want to use a cell sword here before they can remove our code breaker. I think that's worth it. Just try and get them low before they cast a sweeper. Points at five. And then between performer and play with fire, we've got some burn. Although we also have to watch out for Wandering Emperor getting them life now. Take my draw step, another Cell Sword. Okay. So, could start by just playing this face down and then not attacking so we don't run into an Emperor. And then next turn, turn this face up is 3 damage, play with fire is 5. That could do it. Could also play Performer for 2 mana, planning to sacrifice it for another three. Yeah, I think we do this. If they counter, then we can attack since there's less of a concern. But uh, yeah, I don't think we want to run into an Emperor. Opponent has it. Makes a Samurai, but we don't really need to connect with our creatures here. Just need to untap and burn them out. Okay, so we've got a few ways we can do this. Maybe start with play with fire, see if that resolves. And Codebreaker could be a fine draw in case things go wrong here. Sure. Turn this face up. And then I can still sack it to a cell sword as well. All right, that does it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keeper. We're kind of all in on this Bone Brute plus Thrill Seeker to deal a ton of damage. Turn one Siren. Ooh, nice Mask Maker can set up turn two Bone Brute. Even if uh, it runs into opposing creatures, might still be worth it. Is there opponent maybe a Mono Blue kind of Ninja deck? And we could see a ninjutsu here. Yep, Prosperous Thief leaves up one mana. So we do have to watch out for bound spells. They can replay Siren. Okay, so points off to a great start, but uh, turn on Mask Maker also gave us a nice boost. So next turn we could already turn this face up, but we'll kind of wait and see for a good window. Since ideally we get to enough mana where we can play Thrill Seeker with already a face of Bone Brute to sacrifice it for even more damage. Looks like another ninja, double thief, okay, so now they're making two treasures. Yeah, then they can easily pay for the ward should they have some interaction here, or keep up a counter spell. Now at least Mirex doesn't make colored mana anymore. So what's our plan? Now with the performer, we may want to get that in play first. So I think we just start by attacking without transforming anything. Mask Maker gives us a discount. And then I can play this phase down for two mana. See if that resolves. And then maybe just pass and then we can turn this face up for three damage next turn this for six and i can even respond to the ability with monstrous rage so we could one hit ko the opponent basically does kind of require them to not interact with our creatures in any meaningful way A retrofitter that's acceptable so they're hitting me for 10. Can another ninja kill me? Most ninjas only have three power, so I think we're safe. But they still have those treasures and they're about to make even more. So the coast isn't entirely clear. Yeah, they can have all sorts of counter spells here. Although we can potentially get there with what we have in play. Kind of depends what they do next. Siren means they now have Potentially two blockers to get in front of our menace creature, although we can give a trample. 
All right, start here. Thrill Seeker number two doesn't help. And then I guess we want to attack. And then before blockers, transform this in case they have a hover bike to tap something down. So turn face up. In response, we can Monstrous Rage and hope they don't have any meaningful interaction here. Disruption Protocol counters Monstrous Rage. Yep, so now we only deal 6 damage here. They actually survive if they take 6 from Bone Brute, but they're likely just gonna double block it here, yeah. So now we get to deal 4 from our other creatures, and Bone Brute still has an extra ability here, making the opponent lose 3 when it dies. So that's exactly 7. Wow. And that's with our opponent having an incredible start. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is lacking something to do on turn two. Thrill Seeker not looking all that great here. Okay, well, a one lander is kind of the reverse problem, but I'll try it. And then we keep double Kumano or double Mask Maker. Usually the second Mask Maker doesn't end up doing much. Opponent on what well, looks like Boros Convoke. Alright, really hoping for an extra land here. So we can get the Performer down. Starting with Kumano was also an option. Opponent's got a Gleeful Demolition. Nope, hangs on to two mana for reinforcements. Okay, so I can attack and potentially Monstrous Rage if needed. And still play Kumano. Or we can play a face down performer. Although, honestly, going double Kumano is also tempting. So, next turn, this can pick up more counters, and then once we turn it face up, it deals more. So, end of turn reinforcements. We'll see if they have Knight Errands to convoke next turn. Veteran for starters, so yeah, that can gain them some life back. And then two cards in hand. Gleeful Demolition seems to be one of them. Or a Knight Errant, or maybe both. Start with a Knight Errant, tapping five creatures. So they could find more Knight Errants. For now, Recruiter and Inspector. And as that last card, Gleeful Demolition, it's not... Okay, so it's going to be quite the uphill battle here. Can attack a Monstrous Rage to trade for the Knight Errant, and then still play Performer. Could also try to save Monstrous Rage for the turn we turn this face up. And then for now just play this face down and pass, which could also work. And hope they kind of underestimate how much damage we can deal next turn. So this would be 5 power plus 3 is 8, so 8 plus maybe another 8 from attacking. We're getting kind of close. Alright, let's try it. And then hope they're mostly tapped out. And there's a demolition at long last. Gaining three and making three blockers is kind of a problem. Although with the Warden, they might end up tapping some of those. Although maybe they did the math and we're just dead. So let's say we block here, jump here. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus 6 is 16, so it's not lethal. Yeah, I mean, those are my blocks. Okay, maybe should have cast Play With Fire and Upkeep. It was maybe a missed opportunity to try and find another relevant card. So Monstrous Rage, my face down card. Flip it face up. That's 8 damage. Plus another 12. Yeah, play with fire puts them to 1 actually. So, I mean, I guess I wouldn't have had the mana to cast anything else here. 
And then next turn we're definitely dead. So we got them pretty close to dead. Down to one. No chance they tap a pain land. And there, there's another play with fire, so had I cast play with fire and upkeep we would have drawn it, but then not had the mana to cast it. So, very close against Boros here. And most of our damage coming in one big chunk from our performer. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. The Mask Maker can already help this guy's Bone Brute on turn 2. Opponent also harak those colors. So we'll see if we get a chance to attack. We do not, so Virtue takes it out. Alright, so now I probably just cast a Performer instead of going for Kumano first. This is a bit more efficient. And then next turn we can maybe disguise some of our creatures. Step one attack. And I'll start with the Bone Brute. At least the ward's gonna make it harder for the opponent to take it out. A grampy giant making a treasure. Okay, what's next? A sweeper maybe? Brotherhood's end, that's too bad. Okay, so I can try Bone Brute again. And then Cell Sword's also an option. Or we can go Kumano, Performer. And then next turn, the uh, Disguised Bone Brutes can maybe pick up a plus one counter. So it deals more damage when transformed with Performer. And more damage with a Cell Sword. Alright, Giant on defense. And we'll stick to the plan here. Hope they don't have another Brotherhood's End. So just tap out for a shield roots, that would be fine. Giant attacks, that's not a good sign. Means another sweeper is probably incoming. Vein Ripper, that's fine, okay. So Vein Ripper resolves, play with Fire Ghost Face. And uh, don't think we need the land. So we can turn this face up, dealing 7 damage. It has menace, attacks past the Vein Ripper. Could just attack all out and win the game, but we'll get there in style with the Cell Sword. And that's 10 damage total, 7 from its power, plus 3 more from our creature dying. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't really do much. This is a little bit better. Probably hope to draw a different land along the way. And then we want to try and combine Monstrous Rage with uh, the Sacrifice on Thrill Seeker, ideally on this camp to deal a lot of damage. Gonna require some setup. Get to trade for the preacher at least. And deal four on the way out. But our hand leaves a lot to be desired. Alright, time for Kumano. Caverns naming Dragon, which is pretty unusual. Opponent is just blue-black. 
So I wanted to keep Sellsword to combine with a Bone Brute, but without a third land. That's kind of tough, so I'll probably just play it here. Opponent keeps making tokens. Sell sword down. And performers next. So we'll hit for two and play performer. Push pull probably points towards Hidatsugo and Kairi as the dragon they're trying to cast. Okay, so performer attacks. And then we could try to disguise our bone brutes. They're actually pretty close to just killing us with poison here from all the mites. They might have another push-pull in hand. Currently, Preacher is the only creature in their graveyard. Push takes out Performer. One card left in hand, so... Yeah, if they don't have another removal spell, this could get there in combination with a Monstrous Rage. Could also take a slower approach and play Thrill Seeker, but then I won't have the mana next turn to sack the Bone Brute since it loses the ability. So I think it's go time. Do we get there? Maybe a counter on the Monstrous Rage. Activate Mirex and take 9 damage. Well, that was an unexpected win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Mask Maker can disguise Code Breaker on 2, perhaps. And we've got a little bit of interaction. All right, now we could maybe get the performer in play. Opponent, perhaps a poison deck. Soul Search was unexpected. Gets to have a look. Maybe they take a one drop, they get a spirit, but opponent goes for Code Breaker. All right, so no extra land. Do we turn this face up? Could do that, play another Mask Maker. Or we can just attack and Code Breaker. Hope they don't have a, uh, a lockdown next turn, pretty much. Yeah, I guess we'll take that approach. Put an upkeep stop in case we want to play with fire. Hopefully it won't be necessary. Let's see. I guess if we do play with fire now, we can dig towards an extra land, which would be helpful. All our lands will be untapped, and then we can still use the uh, performer at the very least to deal an extra few points. Yeah, you know what? Because we do want to empty our hand for the code breaker. Opponent thinking about this play with fire. Could potentially cast another one if we don't see a land on top. Opponent's gonna get lost the Mask Maker, okay. That's acceptable. Play with Fire Resolves, revealing a Cell Sword. Not really what I'm looking for here. So, yeah, I could play with Fire again. Or we can use a map token, which basically digs towards a land as well. Alright, found one anyway. So, in that case. Yeah, we definitely wanna transform this one. I guess it does expose it to Cutdown which is potentially a problem. So I'll maybe 
start here and then if we find a non-land card we don't expose it to cut down okay bone brute so let's attack turn this face up dealing now four damage opponents at four and then we've got a play with fire to put them down to two opponent's gonna pass take our draw step and then we'll maybe try this scamp could be okay but let's be greedy and attack opponent's gonna another get lost okay so that's gonna happen deal three and then play with fire could be game all right, it's a bit of a weird game here against Asper Control, but uh, we had a decent start. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Mask Maker trying to set up turn two Bone Brute, so got to keep. Still missing kind of a fling effect. Opponent with turn one Epicure. Not sure if it's an actual vampire deck or still just Boros Convoke. So yeah, finding Performer would be nice. It is just Boros Convoke. Well, now the Cavern is stuck naming Vampire at least, so... May not be super helpful going forward. Mask Maker can attack, and we've got Bone Brutes for days. Yeah, against Boros Convoke we definitely need some sort of fling effect to sacrifice Bone Brutes and deal more damage, since the ground's gonna get stalled. At least they found another Epicure they can cast. So it must have been their draw for the turn. A mana short of convoking a Knight Errant, which they might have in hand. So you could see that next turn. Well, for now it is tempting to potentially turn this face up and attack for 6. Never mind. Our opponent has two blockers that can get in the way. So we'll probably just keep adding to the board with another Bone Brute. Opponent can double block Mask Maker. And then we would take out the Epicure. But they probably want to preserve their creatures. Alright, opponent takes it, so now I can still transform this, which would hit him for 7. Play Kumano. Yeah, I mean, it's not without merit. Or I can just get another Bone Brute down. And then next turn we can maybe double turn him face up which could be more impactful if our opponent taps out to put a Knight Errant in play, for instance. They may only have one blocker, and then we can connect with both Bone Brutes, which would be pretty fun. So now, finding a Cell Sword or a Thrill Seeker, Monstrous Rage could be good. Evangelist is kind of annoying here since it generates an extra blocker. But we'll see how much they activate Warden. I guess that can also gain Vigilance to hang back. So it's going to make it harder to uh, get through. And yeah, looks like they're still going to Convoke Night Errant. So they are still down to one blocker here. So how does the math work out? Both of these go face up. So that's 12 damage. Which is sadly a little shy of lethal. And uh, yeah, Mask Maker back on defense, probably not enough to survive, especially with Recruiter coming up. So we got close, but not close enough. If only we had a Cell Sword in hand, then that could have maybe made the difference. Alright, I mean, we'll go out on our own terms, I guess. Hitting for 12. Putting the opponent to 3, if they somehow kill the Bone Brutes, we would win the game. But don't see that happening. Yeah, I think this is a pretty realistic representation of the matchup. We need to get pretty lucky to get there before the opponent has a critical mass of uh, attackers. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a promising hand. A mask Maker to set up turn two Boon Brutes. And then a Cell Sword to sack it. 
So we could deal six from an attack and then nine more from sacrificing our six powered creature. Put on blue white control, perhaps. Now, sadly, our disguised creatures still count as zero mana cards for temporary lockdown purposes. So they could exile it here. It's going to be a tap land and a sunset revelry back up to 23. Okay. So we don't have black mana yet to turn this face up. So in the meantime, I guess we can um, attack all out. Maybe use Monstrous Rage if they set up some blocks. And then Codebreaker could uh, be played face down. Double block Mask Maker. Yeah, this seems okay. Might be overextending if I play another creature here. Could also go for Kumano and then maybe end of turn play with fire to try and find black mana. Could also see that working out. Now we do have to worry about Wandering Emperor exiling a tapped creature. There's my black mana. Okay, so let's say our opponent does have Wandering Emperor. What's the best way to beat it? Attack with both of my creatures. Hope they exile Mask Maker. Then we can turn this face up. And deal 6 after opponent gain 2, so they're at 12. And then Cell Sword would be another 9, so it's not quite lethal. I guess we could cast a Code Breaker as a haste creature, but then I don't have the mana to both turn face up and sacrifice. I guess either way we'll start by attacking and see what's up. If they don't Exile Mask Maker, then it's a little risky to turn this face up. So I probably have to go to damage, otherwise we lose the ward. So our opponent's at 12. I have two instants in Graveyard, can play this phase down for two mana. But yeah, it kind of feels like a sweeper might be incoming next turn. So I don't want to overextend into it. So maybe this time to flip the Bone Brute face up and then sack it to the Cell Sword. If they counter it, at least the Bone Brood doesn't get sacrificed. Devious cover of counters. Okay. So potentially missed out on some damage by not flipping Bone Brood face up first. If they exile Bone Brood without destroying it, it also doesn't trigger, but we get to untap. So it doesn't feel like they have a Wandering Emperor in hand necessarily. Or we might have seen it main face to exile Bone Brood. So it can maybe attack. If I play this for 2 mana, it's still gonna cost me 4 mana to flip face up, so not quite good enough. But I probably need that to kind of take over the late game. Since it's possible our opponent has a Sunfall but just didn't have the fifth line to cast it yet. Yeah, let's see what happens. If their hand was only counter spells, then I suppose Codebreaker as a haste creature could have gotten there. Yeah, Pun falls to two. So now we should just pass, because if they cast a sweeper, 2 1 haste gets there. And uh, if they don't, they likely still die. They do have a deluge they get to cast now. So yeah, if they tap out for Sunfall, we're fine with it. Yep. Okay. So Bone Brood doesn't trigger. But it doesn't matter. And even found another code breaker here. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, triple Monstrous Rage. Not always the best of multiples, but it does pair well with Scamp and Code Breaker. So we'll try it out. Kind of an alternative. Uh, approach to win the game. Kuman also would have been nice, but I'll go for Codebreaker. 
And then next turn we can trigger prowess a bunch. A Ledger Shredder. That's beatable. So maybe start with Kumano, trigger prowess. And then if they block, even with a connive, we'll still at least trade for the Ledger Shredder. And then... Where do we want a Monstrous Rage? Could pump the Scamp, take out Shredder. Or we can just... Uh, let damage hamp and play another scamp. Although next turn it will get a counter, which is maybe better. So I'll pump the uh, scamp, I guess. Not planning to sacrifice it yet. But just to push some damage. So our opponent is kind of a deck looking to pump up the team. I mean, it is tempting to sack scamp here, put them to four. But I'll wait. Storm Chaser Drake is acceptable. And research triggering Shredder. Well, with two more copies of Monstrous Rage, there's a good chance we can trample our way through. And a land helps. So for now. Go to attackers. And we'll see how they block. Double block this camp. Alright, so if I Monstrous Rage, Codebreaker, that's 5 6 damage. So double Monstrous Rage is lethal. Um, but I could also pump up the scamp, and then when it dies, it deals more damage on the way out. So there's a few ways to approach it here. So let's say we try this. And then had we played Scamp before attacking, I guess we could even proliferate that plus one counter, which could also be relevant. So always good to keep that in mind. Alright, so we got to see how Rakdos sacrifice deck in action, and it's definitely not the most competitive deck you can play in the rank ladder, so I would not recommend it as your starter deck. But if you enjoy the disguise mechanic and flinging creatures to kill opponents out of nowhere, it can be a fun time. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.